Good morning, everyone. Welcome aboard Sea Urchin. I have no customers on today, so I thought I would take the opportunity with having amazing weather. I thought I would just pop out this morning and do a short video on drifting wrecks. That's what Whitby is synonymous for. You know, we do a lot of wreck fishing for cod and ling. So I thought I would take the opportunity to come out for a couple of hours. The conditions are simply amazing today. We've got flat calm sea, lovely sunshine. It is only March, but it certainly doesn't feel like it today. So I'm just going to pop out a couple of miles, drop onto our wreck. It's not anything special. Uh, we're transitioning from uptiding to the wreck fishing as we speak. So currently the fishing hasn't been great. This isn't a fishing video. So if you're expecting me to be smacking loads of cod and ling, that's not going to happen today. Really, it's just to give you some pointers and helpers for people who are coming on board maybe for the first time. If you can see how we do things, maybe it'll help you catch a few more fish and you can get fishing more quickly. This is the technology that we use for drifting the wrecks and ground on sea urchin, just to give you an idea. So on the right hand side, the right hand screen, that is the echo sounder. The only things really of any interest at the moment on there are the coloured line that runs along the bottom of the screen, that is the surface of the seabed. And in the left hand corner of the screen at the bottom you can see 10.4, 10.5, that is the water sea temperature. And then above it the big white figures, 55, that is showing you the depth in metres of where we're currently sitting. It does all sorts of other things but that's really the top and bottom of it. And then the left hand screen is the chart plotter. This is absolutely essential, you know, it's a real game changer. We're just approaching the wreck now. The way the wind and the tide are today, we're going to be drifting from the top of the screen to the bottom and slightly from left to right. So I'm going to run up the left hand side, top of the wreck and set a drift up just so you can see what happens. So we're getting closer to the wreck itself now. You look at the screen on the right, as the boat hits the colour on the chart plotter you will see the wreck appear, or rather the colours of the wreck appear, because the echo sounder just marks mass, solid structure, and here it comes now. There we go, the first signs of the wreck are on the plotter screen and on the echo sounder itself. So this is what we're going to be drifting over. I'm just going to take it out of gear so the boat will start to slow down now. So the colours, the, the red is solid mass, that's solid, and the, the other shades are less dense. The blue quite often is that's the least dense, so quite often the fish will show us blue spots. Um, there is definitely a little bit of life on this wreck. Whether anything's going to feed <laughs> is a completely different scenario. So the boat now is slowing down. And what I'm going to do now is, when you look on the screen on the right, you can see now there is no wreck. So ideally what I would do to set up a drift when we're fishing as normal, is I will go past the wreck, stop the boat, let it turn and then drift back over the wreck, which it's just going to start to do now. When we approach the wreck, like now, the anglers on board will hear me say we're either we're coming onto the wreck or we're just marking the wreck. When I say we're just marking the wreck, that means it's time to get proper control of your gear because you're going to be going through some structure. You can see the boat is going to start to come back down. I didn't set the drift properly because I'm trying to hold the camera with one hand and navigate the boat with the other, which isn't the easiest to do. But as you can see now, we're in and amongst the wreck, so everybody will be down and fishing. And you literally, we drift through the wreck. Once everybody's through, it'll be wind up. So everybody then winds up. I'll go and reset the drift and we'll cover a different area. 
there's certainly what we do see is certain areas of the wreck produce better maybe on the flood tide and certain areas on the ebb and then some days when it's on god there's just there's fish all over the wrecks so even though they're marking fish they might not be feeding fish that's something else to consider but it certainly looks to me like there's some signs of life on this wreck We'll find out. We'll go and have a couple of drifts. Okay, don't be fooled. We're not in the Mediterranean. We are in the North Sea at Whitby. All I wanted to do before I start fishing was go through the tackle. This is this is purely based on Whitby and wreck fishing. I'm not trying to tell everybody how to go and fish wherever they go in the UK. This really isn't the aim. The aim of this is to get everybody a feel for how we do things and the equipment that we use to do it. I've got two different setups, both with the same reel loaded with the same braid, but I've got two different rod classes. We have a 2030 rod and a 3050. They're both a Shakespeare GX2 ugly sticks. They're absolutely brilliant rods for the money and they are my choice of higher rods that I have on board Sea Urchin. I'm not sponsored by anybody, I just like the rods, I think they are absolutely fantastic value for money. The reason that I have two different types of rod class is I started off with the 2030s. Now, if I had my own small private boat that I was going to go out fishing in, and there were only going to be a couple of lines running out the back of the boat, then I would go with the 2030, um, because they are absolutely beautiful through action rod, absolutely fantastic I've just I've got a couple at the back so I'll just grab one here right so these are yeah so the ugly stick absolutely brilliant rods for the money I couple them with the pen warfare reel again for the money for what I do and for what I require of them I think they're amazing I really do they've got this is the, um, the 30 LW which is a level wind reel so the reason that I use these are because I get a lot of less experienced people using my higher tackle and I want to make things as easy as I can for them a lot of the experienced anglers say oh, I don't like I mean I personally don't use a level wind but for somebody who's just started it's great because you don't need to worry about the line bunching up on the spool. It will just get evenly placed across the spindle. One thing not to worry about. The other good thing with these reels in particular, I find, is this. So this is the lever drag. So this will either... Or you click it and it goes into free spool. People who are not used to drifting the wrecks quite often when they get stuck in it because that's part and parcel of wreck fishing you are going to get stuck in the wreck they panic and these have been the best reels that I can find for if it's really locked up tight you can smack these out of gear under pressure they are really really hard durable reels again not sponsored by pen I just like the reels so that's the 30 LW um, you also can get left or right handed all mine are right handed I am going to pick up a left handed this year because I had a couple of people who could have benefited from it last year so that's the hardware these reels are loaded with the same 60 pound braid that I have on all my reels it's not any particular brand it's just a good quality 60 pound braid I'm not going to tell people what braid to use that's entirely a personal choice all my reels are loaded with 60 the one thing that I will say is when you wreck fishing times have advanced so much now that there really is no need to fish with monofilament. It's absolute nightmare. When we have a boat full of anglers, we might get 10 people on board saying, we're all trying to drift the same wreck. Everybody drops over at the same time. The people on mono, I just think they have such a huge disadvantage that there's so much stretch in the monofilament. It's like a giant elastic band. The depth of the water around here is between 50 and 60 meters. And the amount of stretch in the mono you just don't get the bites you don't get the sensitivity so if you take anything from this and you have fished a bit before when you come to Whitby to fish and drift the wrecks get some braid on your reels because yeah mono is absolutely 
painful for this style of fishing. I know it has its place, but in my mind, not in wreck fishing. 60 pound braid's good. 40's not really man enough for the task because the wrecks have got all sorts of nasties on them. 60 pounds, pretty good. That's what I would recommend. The other, so I was saying I have two different rods. I have a 2030 and I have a 3050. What I propose to do is I'm going to I'm going to drift the wreck a couple of times now, and I'm going to use the 2030 and I'm going to use the 3050. There's a big difference between the 2030 and the 3050. The 3050, some people might say, oh, you're massively overgunned. Not really, and I'll show you the reason why when uh, I start the drifts. So in terms of tackle and hardware, so this video is all aimed at bait fishing. You can do all sorts of other things on the wrecks, but this one, I'm going to do others, but this one is purely to do with bait fishing. Don't need a huge amount of complicated bits and pieces, whistles and bells. When you drift in wrecks, you are 100%, if you're fishing them effectively, you're going to lose gear. It is just part and parcel of wreck fishing. So, what type of gear do we use? At the end of the 60 pound braid for my reel, I just loop on. This is a size 4.0 nickel snap switch. They're really tough, really strong. So when you go to pull for a break, these don't give. I've seen people using some fairly small and light swivels and they do open up and they do break. These things don't. These are built for wrecking. So I would recommend those, size 4 O's. Bait trace. I did a short video not long back on doing some prep and tying up bait traces. Well, there they are. Okay. I do use them. I wasn't kidding you on. So that's the bait trace and it is just a muppet with two hooks, a size 7 or circle hook on top and a size 8 or O'Shaughnessy hook underneath. With a muppet sitting on top. I'll show you how to put the bait on, it really isn't difficult. All I'm going to be fishing with today is squid. I may do another video when the mackerel turn up, but at the moment there's no mackerel around so we won't be fishing for fresh mackerel before we start. So it's just going to be how to mount a squid on those. And the only other thing that I give, or would recommend really, you can use what you fancy, but I just use the stuff that I know has caught us fish previously in the past. The other thing that we'll use sometimes when it gets a little bit trickier, uh, these are called hock eyes. Okay? We use sets of hock eyes in various colours, whatever takes you fancy. I'm quite partial to black ones um, or loomy. These are the loomy ones. Cheap, they're not, not too expensive, about a pound for a set and we put a bit of bait on those and that's nothing technical literally you just chuck it in, uh, chop your squid into chunks and just hook it on it's not difficult to uh, to master that one the only other thing like i said not many components the only other thing to wonder about is your leads there are only i find personally for bait fishing only two leads that you need you either need a 12 ounce or a pound so there's four ounce difference. So why do we use these two in particular? Today, for example, there's very little wind and it's a small tide. I've discussed tidal range before, but in Whitby, it's sort of between four and six meters. At the moment, I think today is a 4.4, so it's a small tide, which means that the boat won't drift very quickly. It gives you more time in the wreck, you drift through it quite slowly. So in that instance, I would always go with a 12 ounce. You'll be able to hold bottom perfectly well with a 12 ounce lead today. When the tides get bigger um, and there's a bit of wind on the boat speed mid so today i'll just take one step back so today the boat drift speed will probably be in the realms of 0.5 or 0.6 of a knot in speed on a small tide with light wind on a big tide with a little bit of wind you might be doing a knot or even maybe 1.2 Above that I won't drift the wrecks because you just go through them too quickly and lose lots of gear. But what happens is the lines will start to stream away from the boat and then it becomes more difficult to hold bottom. So in that instance then I would always go for the pound, pound lead. Those are the only two. I've never had to go above a pound lead. Um, 
because I don't fish multiple lots of hooks with real big baits on because that creates drag in the water so leads that's it we've got leads we've got rigs we've got a rod and reel I'm going to fire the boat back up I've turned the engine off normally the engine will be running when we drift but I've turned it off so it makes it easier for you to hear me today I'm going to fire it back up I'll set the boat into drift I'll tackle up and then we'll mount the squid and we'll have a drift and see what we can do what I thought I would do is show you as a close-up how we mount the squid just to see show you from a different angle so we've got the Muppets on the trace already this is the this one here this is the 7-0 circle and this one is the 8-0 O'Shaughnessy so we start by using we use put the bottom hook first so we get our squid and then we hook him in halfway down the body turn it around and push it out of the bottom of the squid then we hook on the head you can see I like to go through the eyes there's quite a bit of juice in there in the head so I want that to leak off into the water and then that just sits like so we then take our circle hook and we measure it off so we want it so it tips the top of the squid like there and then one two we wrap it around twice and then hook it through the top of the squid then we, all we need to do is simply slide down the muppet and that's it you're ready to go and you can see the key thing is both hooks standing proud what does tend to happen um, the first thing that normally goes when you get a bite on the wreck is the head they really do have a tendency and because it's got tentacles and stuff hanging down especially uh, the pouting the whiting and stuff like that if you get you get in tiny nibbles the chances are when you wind back up the head will have gone but just like I spoke about with the wreck fishing video keep changing your bait don't keep dropping the same piece of squid up and down up and down I change every cast put a fresh squid on and I would never lower one down without a head on I just have no confidence whatsoever but yeah simple's best right so I've just set the drift up I'm gonna drop down see how we get on is to keep in contact with your thumb on the, on the spool. See that? Stop the overruns because when your lead gets to the bottom it will stop. The spool won't unless you put your thumb on it. It's real good practice to get used to using that's it, we're down, okay. So now we're down put it into gear, I'll do a couple of lifts. So now my gear is on the bottom. As you start to drift through, you will feel rattles, taps, bangs, they're not necessarily bites. gear hitting the wreck and the, and the key to it is to feel your way through. If you keep clattering the wreck, see there, the rod just held down, but because I was in control, and then if you feel it's really, really snaggy, just wind up and let it back down again. Don't make the mistake though of not being in the wreck. You don't come wreck fishing to save money. There we go. Caught the wreck again. But because I was quick, I kept it out. If you just drag it through the wreck, you will literally hook it every single drift. Through. Right. 
Right, okay. Oh, no, I've got it out again. This is this is exactly what I was hoping to do. As you can, I must have hooked the wreck. I'm going to wind up now. We're just at the back of it anyway. So while I'm winding up, I'll talk to you. That happened there exactly as I hoped it would. I must have hooked the wreck at least half a dozen times then. But as soon as I felt contact with the tackle on the wreck, I literally just a, a flick is enough to move it away. Sometime you are going to hook it and it will be solid and you're going to break off. But I literally hooked the wreck six times then. But because I was quick and gave it a little flick, it kept it out. I got it out of the wreck. Whereas people who just, the, the thing not to do 100% is to lower, just go to the bottom and then just do nothing. Now, I used the 2030 class rod that time which is the slightly lighter one, which is what the majority of people use. The only, my only criticism of it is, so I've, I've got the 12 ounce lead on there, and the tide at the moment, I can have better control if I was fishing with a pound lead, so that's what I'm gonna do. But I find that with a 2030 and a pound lead, the rod is not overloaded, but it's not as responsive when I go for a quick lift to try and keep it out of the wreck. The 3050 is absolutely perfect for it. So I'm going to reset the drift and we'll have another go around, but I'll use the heavier rod. Okay, so this time 3050. So this is down on the bottom now. So I've engaged, lift it up. Right, now I'm fishing, I'm in control. I did say it was not going to be a fish catching video. Oh. He says that was a bite. sure at some point it will get stuck because that's the nature of wreck fishing. Yeah, it's a, it's a, this is a snaggy bit. And then a big drop there. There to pay off literally a couple of meters of line. But that wouldn't be possible if you weren't in control. If you just had it out of gear, if you had the reel out of gear, so it didn't pay off any line or anything, you wouldn't know that. And when you're bait fishing, you want your gear in the wreck. lack of concentration there we go we've caught the wreck so what you can see this is what I wanted to demonstrate so yes it's stuck in the wreck but and the boat is drifting away the tide is taking the boat away there's nothing you can do to stop the boat it's going to keep drifting so if you you can see now if I just show you look at the speed at which the braid is peeing on well that's fine nothing's going to happen apart from the braid's going to go away it's staying in the wreck. So now I need to break out. The braid, the braid is still paying off the reel, well, that's not a problem. So now we just wrap around. Okay, 
I have lost everything. But that is wreck fishing. I mean, this is just a piece of wood. You can use water pack, there's all sorts. The key to using a breaker though, if you are going to do it for yourself, is to make sure that when you wrap around, you do enough turns around whatever it is you're going to break off with. You need to do enough turns to make sure that the braid doesn't slip at all. If the braid slips because you haven't got enough coils, then instead of breaking at the bottom where the rig is, so you don't lose any braid, it will literally snap here. So you'll lose 50, 60 meters of braid. It's a good tip that one. Make sure, so when you think, I, I normally go around maybe 10, 12 times around the breaker and then the boat will do the rest because it's just drifting away. I just hold it still and eventually it'll part. But I see quite regularly people trying to do it for themselves and only wrap around three or four times, the braid slips and that's it, 50, 60 meters. There's enough gear on the wrecks already without us adding to it unnecessarily. So that's how to use a brick. Okay, I'm gonna quickly show you how we attach the size four snap link swivel. So this is the 60 pound line. We just simply make a loop. It doesn't matter how big it is, give yourself plenty of room. And then you make a loop, twist it towards you, and then take the rest of the loop and put it through the eye there. And you will see the eight of the figure of eight. And then you just pull it down. It's a really, really strong knot. Again, I've tied thousands of them. I've never had one go. So then we just trim the tag off And it's just simply a case of we loop to loop this on. Like that. Very easy, very strong, and that's how we do it. And so it doesn't matter then what you're fishing, you can just clip on, clip off. So whether you're fishing with bait, traces, hawk eyes, it really doesn't matter. That's that's how we do it. Okay, so we've come, I've set the drift off and we're going to have a drop down. <clears throat> Whether we're going to get a bite or not today is debatable. There's still a couple of things that I wanted to talk to you about. Mainly striking plain fish, but let's have a drop. The tide is starting to ease off now, which is good news. We were drifting a little bit too quick before, and that is part of the problem. When you come wreck fishing, if you've got the luxury of doing it, have a look at the tides. On my, on my website, on charterboats.co.uk, on my availability, all the tide heights are in there. Ideally, for a really good day's wrecking, I always look for a tide between um, 4.7 and below, ideally. That means you should be able to spend nearly all the day on the wreck. Okay, so... We're still going through all right. I just need to adjust. There, that's better. So we're just coming into the wreck now. I just felt the first, the first bits of wreck. So yeah, pick a tide below 4.7 is ideal. On a smaller tide, you will drift slower. For the inexperienced anglers, ideal tide is what you want really to you can feel your way through the wreck better when you're moving through quickly everything happens so fast when you first touch the wreck by the time you go to live you know you can be snagged up so yeah make your life easy where you can where you can take advantage of a small tide this is much easier now for me to control the tackle he says, having just hooked the wreck. But you really do have to concentrate. See the difference there? I, I've not paid any line out, but I'm now on a high piece of the wreck. Oh. even higher piece now I'm actually still on the bottom so 
the wreck has risen by at least a metre in that particular bit. And now look, I've just paid a load of line out. That's the importance of not fishing with your reel in gear. You need to be able to pay that line out to keep your tackle at the bottom. I don't know whether that was a, I think that might have been a, a little pluck from a pouting or something. So then lift and lower it back in. That's it. Now. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that I was going to I think if it had been a different time of year and there'd been a few fish on the wrecks, I might have been able to catch one for the camera, but I think I've really got my work cut out today. I am going to come back out again on the wrecks. I'll have another day when there's a few more fish around, so hopefully we can get a few for the camera. But for me, it wasn't particularly important today about catching the fish. It was more about showing the technique. Yeah, the drift slowed down significantly because I'm still in the wreck, whereas when I first started filming this, I think we were drifting at 1.2 knots, which is a little bit too fast, really, for the wrecks. And we're down to 0.7 now, which is kind of a really nice speed to go through. You cover the wreck, but you don't go through it really quickly. doesn't look like I'm going to get a bite so all I can do is talk theory which isn't ideal is it let's be honest but so you w when you're using braid like we discussed earlier you will feel all the little taps rattles and bangs what you don't do is the first little tap and rattle that you get start I, I see it regularly and you just end up it costs you fish is you'll see the first little tap tap and then next thing they're doing people are doing this and I'm like absolutely no need to do that at all all you need to do when you get a bite so you're going to be out of gear as we've discussed so you can pay line is just keep your thumb on hard and when the rod tip instead of just being tap tap what you'll get is when it's continual then all you need to do literally is just lift into the fish put it into gear tuck the, ar uh, the, the butt of the rod under your arm place your left on the front and start to wind and this is as exciting as it is what you want to be considering is don't pull the hooks out of the fish's mouth we call it Robson Greening so this is what we see There is absolutely no need to do that with this style of fishing. Slow and steady wins the race. So that is literally all you need to do. Sometimes the need may arise if you get a really big fish where it starts to hurt under your arm would be to come round the front and you tuck it into the groin and wind like so. But literally for 99% of everything that we catch around here, just tuck it under the arm, slow and steady. Let the rod absorb the lunges of the fish and you just wind them up slow and steady. That's it, that's how you play them. So Robson Green, we're not catching marlin, we're fishing for coddling at Whitby. So slow and steady wins the day. I think I'll do one more drift and then I'm going to go back in.
having been up tiding for the last three or four months it's taking some getting used to dropping back down to 50 meters when you've only been fishing in sort of 15 to 20. there we go we're down of wreck fish in this you feel the lead bouncing around it's the it's the hooks that are trapped not the lead <coughs> you see how there's, there's no rush there's no panic as long as you don't have it blocked off the boat's just drifting away this is tightening up and that's everything gone. Yeah, the stark realities of wreck fishing, I'm afraid. That uh, you lose gear. So what would I advise you to bring? For a typical, you know, if, you, if you're coming on one of the small tides and we're going to spend the day on the wrecks, the full day, then I guess 10 sets of gear minimum. The chances are you won't lose 10, but if you don't have replacements, then oh, you start to lose confidence. I've always got plenty on board, so you're never not going to be able to fish, but yeah, I would recommend a minimum of 10 sets of gear. And then leads wise, yes, you need pounds, you need 12 ounces just depending on what the tide's going to be, how we're going to be fishing. You can get away with lighter leads, you, you know, so if you're going to come for a, if we're talking for a full day, I would also add in some 10 ounce leads. The 10s we would use for fishing with shads, um, which are small rubber lures that we bounce across the bottom or wind up with jelly worms, things like that. So 10s, 12s and pounds will cover you for everything, certainly around Whitby that you need to do. Well, I hope it's been there's a, I hope there's a few little useful bits in there for people who have not done a huge amount of wreck fishing. Um, I enjoy making these. It'd have been nice if we could have caught some fish, but I guess from a charter perspective, on a good day, I'd like to be at sea with customers, not filming selfishly on my own catching. So, yeah, I haven't caught for the camera this time. I will do another one in the summer, maybe an evening session. If there's anything that you particularly want me to cover for the fishing around Whitby, everything that I do is charter based. It's not, you know, personal fishing. It's just to try and assist people that are coming. But if there's something that you want me to cover, then get in touch with me. And when I find the time, I'll, I'll do a short piece for you. So I hope you've enjoyed watching and see you aboard Sea Urchin soon. Thanks.